Hi, I'm Bloodied Porcelain, and I'll be playing Nienna, the Elven Sorceress. Hi, I'm Legacy, and I'll be playing Brynhildr, the Witcher. Hello, I'm Stabbykins, and not only will I be playing Sigrun, the Dwarven Merchant, I'll also be playing a very special character tonight. Hello, I'm Grizz, and I'll be playing Phoenix, the Werewolf Silversmith. And I'm Solomon, and I will be your storyteller for this evening. The previous day for our professionals had been one of a bit of turmoil. They had fought off a number of Dopplers who had come in trying to essentially create an inn for them to grab the children and take them back to their master. And they had a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart between several of them. Nienna talking to Brickhilda, Nienna talking to Irileth, and so and so on and so forth. After the arrival of the bear which are fouled, they had finished on making preparations to head to Tucson using a portal with that uh the witch Tasha would put together for them so that way they would arrive close to where the location of the white wolf was. We come back as Tasha is finishing her spell work and the ritual that she had done to find the location of the Butcher of Blaviken was f finishing up. She looks to the lot of you and smiles. Now, now like I said, this can get you close, but it won't get you right on the doorstep, so to speak. So you'll just have to ask around. All right. Uh, out of character, my impression was that I would be doing the portal and she was basically going to guide me on where to drop it. Oh, that's right. Yes, you would, you would be the main caster of the portal. She would like assist you on finishing the look on making sure that the location is as close to where she found as possible and making it so that it's less stressful on you. Excellent. That means I shouldn't take damage this time. Generally, <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll sort of nod a little bit and look over at everybody else. Everyone ready? Ready when you are, dear. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. All right. Um, I, I have one uh, check, actually. Is Phoenix still in werewolf form, or is Phoenix shifted back to human for this travel to Tucson? Uh, for the, well, I mean, it'd be a bad idea. No, he shifted. He's been in human form since the end of the meeting, uh, previous session. So, right. He, okay. He's in currently in human form. Okay. Just wanted to check. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will set up for the portal. I'm not going to use, uh, Ritual of Magic, because I don't need it if I've got her here, because I'm only one vigor shy of being able to cast it on my own uh, without yeah. damage anyway. So if she's here, she should easily be able to take that very tiny burden off of my shoulders. Um, yep. And I will uh, pull out what I need and begin to craft the portal. Assuming you want me to make a spellcasting check. Yes? Oh, yes. Apologies. I thought I'd hit the button. My apologies. Eighteen? Jesus, that's a terrible roll. But at least it's not a one. <laughs> It's true. Would you like to spend a little bit of luck to push it up to 20 just to be sure? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Oh, okay. so pushing it up to 20, you get the spell off without a hitch. She manages to take some of the burden off of you so the chaos doesn't 
uh, assault your body uh, any worse than if you were casting any other spell. And you create the standing portal, so that way you can head over to Tucson, a very large distance from uh, Machina, but you are you are no ordinary sorceress. Plus, you have the help of another one, so that helps. It does. Fow just grumbles a little. He's like, "Fucking hate portals." Right then, you'll you hurt my feelings. Go on. There, yeah. And uh, Fowd walks in first. Anna sort of gesturing people through because it does require energy to hold this open for long. So she's mm -hmm. like, please, let's not dawdle. Don't worry, dear. I'm sure your portals are just fine. And uh, Sigrun will go ahead and waltz right on through. As will, um, as will, uh, Bernhilder. Phoenix will nod at Tasha before entering. Tasha smiles to uh, to Nienna and says, "Do you want me to just stay here and uh, manage, and so that way you have another anchor point to come back?" Or oh, I can get us back. You're welcome to come if you want to meet him. Well, nah, I think I'm fine. All right. Well, I would appreciate any help you could provide in case we get a nasty surprise while we're away. Of course. I'll make I'll keep an eye on the kids for you. I'll nod at that. And uh, step through the portal and turn, give her a little wave, and close it behind me. So you step through and close the portal behind you, and as you turn around, you see that you are in, well, the Duchy of Toussaint. A vibrant and colorful place. Even nature itself the colors seem more bright and powerful here. You can feel that there's this sense of magic here that is not just the fact that chaos is at work strongly here. There is just an intense life in this place that feels welcoming and uh, glorious almost. At the moment, you are in a little clearing in the forest, but you can hear the sounds of what sounds like a small uh, hamlet or a small village nearby. Damn. Never thought I'd come here. It's gorgeous. On the I other was way, about to say, huh? I'm fairly certain I didn't drink this morning. No, you had two glasses. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Well, you are the master of finding poke, Sigrun. It's like gestures out into, <laughs> gestures out into the duchy. How do we find a witcher? She did say he'd be within a relatively short distance of the town, so. Well, I suppose I ought to get down to asking some folks and rubbing some hands. Off we go, then. And uh, Sigrun will go ahead and uh, start leading the charge. All right. You head into the little uh, village. It's not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but it is sizable. It's bigger and has a little more life to it than uh, the ha the uh, villages and hamlets of the outs of like the outskirts of Novograd and Sidious, or uh, for those of you who have been to the north and have been through, say, Velen, you know that a lot of places tend to be small and ramshackle. Even this place looks fairly well put together. This place sort of gives off that intense liveliness and wonder that even just in this hamlet, 
beyond whatever you might feel in uh, back in Nilfgaard or in any of the northern uh, regions of Nilfgaard's rule. There are people talking, speaking in mostly elder speech, but there's a odd accent to it. And uh, as you all approach, you get a few looks, but most of them are bright and kind, raised hands and uh, greetings in elder speech to Niena and Irileth. And uh, even a, a few small nods to Brynhilda. Uh, Niena will politely wave back and smile. Yeah, uh, Burn Hilder is a little bit too um, distracted. <laughs> um, so whenever somebody gives her like a friendly, like smile or like a, a wave or anything like that she's, she's just kind of like her eyes kind of like dart like from side to side like she's a like she's a nervous rat almost <laughs> fair enough Fowl just like looks to the people who give him uh, polite nods and even waves and he just like waves back slowly and then leans down to Brent Hilder. I don't know if I like this I don't think I like this. And Sigrun is just completely taken in by the sheer vibrance and hue of the grass that is uh, a very short distance uh, from her eyes. It's true. She could even reach out and touch it. Well, she's going to touch the grass, actually. How there does it go. feel? Uh, it's feel it actually feels whereas the some of the grass is like harsher and feels a little even a little bit sharper back west here it feels almost soft. Oh, incredible! I feel strangely aligned. You should um, you should experience Dorblathana at some point. I think I'd love that. Oh, oh I take right, fine oh. nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I failed. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, she'll <clears throat> kind of clear her th throat and uh, brush her hands off on her apron and uh, scuttle along a, a little faster, uh, just trying to see if there are any notable, or at least more notable, um huts in this particular hamlet uh there is one building that immediately stands out to you that is a little bit longer and larger that you could tell is probably the tavern given that you can see the you can hear the sounds of revelry and laughter coming from it uh it is a it is the early afternoon but that doesn't but of course people need to drink all the time If anybody's going to find anybody, I'd say a good start would be the tavern. What say you all? You may be right. I'm going to take that sack of coin from last session and just sort of pop it into Sigrun's hand. In case you need to grease palms. Oh, you know I'm good at that. She smiles, and uh, she will go ahead and start making her way towards the tavern. All right, when you head in there, there are a number of people just laughing and che and cheering and singing uh, songs in uh, the Toussaint dialect of elder speech. And they, you can't really tell exactly what they're saying because some of the pronunciations are a little weird. But you can tell it's a happy tune, at least. And uh, there is the 
uh, innkeeper who is smiling and also raising a, gla a uh, glass. But though, as opposed to most places which have mead or ale, it seems like a lot of the drinks here are wine. Alrighty. Uh, she will go ahead and head right up to the counter and uh, try and flag the uh, innkeeper down. It takes a moment because the innkeeper is just generally keeping his eyes level, but then he uh, just uh, double takes a second and looks down <laughs> because it, <laughs> apparently this is an individual who does who isn't used to looking for uh, dwarven patrons. And he says, oh, uh, my, my sincerest apologies. What can I get for you? Oh, please, it's fine. I get it all the time. And she gives like just the very slightest side eye to the rest of her group before back to the innkeeper. I'm actually looking for someone in this case. Do you happen to know the White Wolf? The White Wolf? Hmm. Perhaps I might know something. And he uh, looks kind of expectantly at you. Hmm. Uh, she'll take some coins out of the bag, a, a decent handful of them, and she'll casually uh, palm them over into his hand. Yeah, the White Wolf. Hmm. There are a few people who go by that moniker. Uh, if you're wanting to clarify my memory a little bit, he looks like he's expecting a little bit more. <laughs> She'll go ahead and palm uh, half again into his hand. All right. Uh, the White Wolf. Yes, you are l looking for uh, Sir Geralt. Yes? That's right. Uh, he is not far from here, actually. He is... I would not call him the lord of this place, but he is an important member of our community. He runs the local vineyard. Oh, is that so? Where can I find this? Oh, it is maybe about an hour or two's ride out of town. Uh, just a little bit to the northwest. There are plenty of signs. His vineyard is quite well known. Uh, it is called the Corvo Bianco. Corvo Bianco. Excellent. Uh, I don't suppose there's any carts going to and from on this lovely afternoon, is there? I believe that one of his shipments of his newer uh, vintage did actually come by quite quite recently. You might be able to still catch them. Oh, excellent. Where might I find them? I believe that they were over at the herbalist at the moment. They, they are just, and he will point out the uh, little shack near the end of town, like just out the window. Uh, I am sorry, but I must ask, what is your business with Geralt? Well, we are in need of his services. We oui. and he looks over to the rest of the group, look uh, expectancy, like expectantly, like look, kind of prodding to see like if anyone else is going to speak. You have a very eclectic band. Yes, and I assure you, we are quite professional. Right, so the herbalist at the end of the road. Excellent. Thank you so much, good sir. And she'll actually uh, palm a few more coins into his hands for being a good sport about uh, the information. And uh, she will uh, step away from the counter. Uh, as you step away, you hear from behind you, uh, good luck on the path. And you look back and he is looking up specifically at Brynhilda and Faud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brynhilda just kind of 
like glances over uh, over to uh to uh to her new companion <laughs> then looks back and kind of gives the guy a deadpan stare and one nod <laughs> Right then, well, you all ready to see if we can catch a cart on our way out of town? That would be worth a shot. Let's cross our fingers and hope it's still there. And uh, Sigurd will go ahead and head out the door. Uh, she is going to kind of power walk towards the uh, herbalist shop. You head over to the herbalist's little store, and you uh, can hear a few raised voices. Uh, one speaking a much more fluent uh, elder speech; the other, and it's a little broken. It's not; it's obviously not the native tongue of the second per person speaking, at least not like this dialect of it. But uh, you can hear hear that their voice is a little more rough and gruff, and they're just like, "I told you, you bleed it. You can't get." Be giving me that that price for that for that much. The agreed upon was, and he's just like basically just shouting, uh, haggling almost. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now what's going on here? Is this a business disagreement? I hear. As you all approach, you see that there is uh, an herbalist who is. Uh, Mid, uh, middle-aged woman, her hair starting to go, to go gray, uh, just looking up at you, at you after, and trying to like uh, compose herself. Say, uh, oh, uh, one moment, I'm so sorry. And he, and the other individual she's speaking with is another dwarf, who has a uh, small tuft of like dark brown reddish hair on the top of his head. He's like, yeah. It'll take more than a damn minute if you keep trying to bugger me out of this. And, uh, Brynhilda. Mm -hmm. As you know the stories of the White Wolf, you know some several of the stories that the Bard Dandelion has told about the White Wolf and his friends. You know this to be a dwarf by the name of Zoltan Cheve. Okay. Uh, and he's like right there. He is right there, just like haggling loudly and belligerently with an a uh, herbalist woman. Um, how much did he say the um the uh the the herbs or whatever he's looking to get? We're gonna cost. Did we? Uh, were we able to ever get a price on that? From what you heard, just from like the tail end of it, it seems like uh, they were trying to. The herbalist was trying to get them for about like fifteen per uh, bundle, fifteen coins per bundle, and he's got about like seven bundles there. And it seemed the agreed upon price was like twelve. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I've got this. Uh, she will approach the uh, the pair and kind of whisper a little to the herbalist. You need some help. I think I've got some business. A sacrament might help you out here. Uh, if you if you say so, maybe you could speak to the dwarf. Maybe he would listen to you because he seems to just it. What I'm speaking is like speaking to a wall. Oh, don't worry. I speak very well to walls. She'll smile and wink, and she will step out in front of the herbalist and cross her arms. Hello there. What seems to be the issue? What, you're stepping in for? Well, hmm. the issue was that we agreed upon the price of, tw of 12 coins per bundle of this particular herb that we use to spice some of our more 
celebration-focused wines. But of course, we, whenever she we come in today, she says that the price had to be up to fifteen. That the frost had taken care of taken care of a good bunch of what we were needing. But we set the agreed upon price before. If we if she wanted to talk to change the price, she should have come to us earlier. I see. Do you have this in writing by any chance? <laughs> Your buyer's shite in the woods. And he just uh, pulls out a large uh, reader that he just ha like has on hand in his pack. That is uh, basically the long contract of uh, set prices and all of that. Uh, excellent. Is she able to skim through from where she is right now? Uh, yes, but it'll take you a, a moment. In that moment, uh, Zol the dwarf Zoltan is just looking around at the people that you came in with. He's like, oh, shite, I thought my, my friends were eclectic. It's a weird ass bunch you got there. Well, it's about to get weirder, actually. Oh, fucking course it is. And he just like stops when he looks at Brynhilda and just furrows his brows a little bit. Never seen a lady witcher. That's new. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> huh. And then he just like looks at her for a second, shrugs, and then looks back to Sigrid. All right. Uh, in that moment that goes by, uh, what is she able to glean from the contract? Uh, the contract does see, uh, say that this price was generally set, that there are, uh, there are, uh, things in place for if the price has to change, that they, that there should be an agreed upon new price after some consideration and discussion between the two parties. And... You managed to find that there were also a few things in, pla in place for if prices have to be changed without discussion, that the, that the discussion should happen immediately after. It just seems that Zoltan's in a hurry today. Hmm. Well, it's right here. A number of clauses that seem to have allowances and discussions for any sudden and necessary price changes. Ones I'm sure I could help you with. All right, fine, Margaret. I'll pay. I'll pay her what it is for now. But then, but this dis this discussion ain't over. Oh, of course not. And he just like slaps down uh, a very hefty pouch of gold, and then turns to look to you and is like, "Well, I thank you for stepping in, at least keeping me from losing my temper." <laughs> oh, it is quite all right. Say, you wouldn't happen to be in, in charge of the cart going back, would you? That I would. That I would. Uh, why exactly are you wanting to know that? Do you have business at Corfa Bianco? That I do. With your friend, as a matter of fact. Which one? And he just, like, sort of narrows his eyes a little bit and turns his head. Geralt. And what do you be needing Geralt for? Oh, a matter of life and death, as I imagine it would usually be. And she'll look over to Nienna to see if she wants to spill the beans on that or not. Information where after a particular quarry he's tangled with in the past. Tangled with and it still lives. That is a rarity, one that's concerning. Indeed, so I'm sure you can understand why we need to speak to him. I can, but I just want to make sure that you're not leading this quarry back to us. We we've got something good sent settled up here. Not as far as we're aware of, no. We've actually taken rather extreme lengths to make sure that it doesn't follow us. Can't 
completely guarantee it, but we've done what we can. Uh, and we came via magic, so. Nah, nah, fine. All right. You can get. You can take up space on the back of the cart. Much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to talk to your, uh, which are friends first. Oh, of course. Go right ahead. Uh, as everyone piles out and moves to step up, up to the cart, he moves over to Foud and Brynhilda. Foud just looks to him with an eyebrow raise and then just point, like, points his thumb over to Brynhilda. To which he then just shifts his focus. Okay. So, Lady Witcher. Yeah. What exactly are you and yours chasing? I know that you probably can't exactly go into massive detail for everyone else, but if something might be coming to Corvo Bianco, I need to know what exactly I should be brandishing my axe for. I'll just give you a, a word of warning. If you have any mirrors, cover them up. Uh, it's good and fucking cryptic. That's about as much as I want to give you. Fair enough. Ask your friend. The White Wolf. But I, f I figure as soon as you go and talk to him that you that I won't have much time to ask him. Then really do yourself a favor and make sure you cover anything up with the reflection. Well, all right then. And he will just nod and he still looks a little apprehensive, a little bit wary, but he relaxes just a little bit as he steps outside and says, all right, everyone climb aboard. I'm not going to be dragging your asses behind. Thankfully, the wagon that he is uh, going, to, he is driving is actually quite large. It, ha it looks like it was used to carry several crates down here, and he's only carrying a few smaller ones back. So you've got plenty of room to maneuver. And oh, and it's I imagine dwarf accessible. Yes, it is. Yes, there are. There are, in fact, uh, little steps that are uh, made to basically be able to be slatted underneath it. So that way anyone can climb, anyone of any height can climb up and then climb back down. Yes, oh, yes, Sigrun. There are, in fact, booster seats. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> And does anyone have anything that they would like to say in the time that it takes to get from the hamlet to Corvo Bianca? I think Nina would just make polite small talk with uh, the driver. Nothing particular or important. She just she she's like we're we're showing up being super fucking shady, giving this guy no information. We should at least be polite. Very much <laughs> so. Uh, give me a charisma check. Let's see how that goes. Okay. You got da, da, this. Da, da, da. I believe in you. Uh, I mean, my charisma's not bad. Nineteen. Okay, so you make small talk with him. He makes small talk back. Uh, it's okay. It's not full. Like, he's not fully and utterly... Uh, he's still wary, but he's not, like, paranoia level of wary. He's just kind of... It, you feel like it's just sort of natural for him to be sort of tense, to be a little bit prepared for anything to go wrong at any time. Actually, because I just remembered that I have this, could I have glamoured up before that? It just gives me a plus. It gives me a plus three. I'll permit it. And uh, so that would have been a twenty. Twenty-two. Two. 
Yeah. And you get and you talk a little bit about the various topics to him. He talks to you a little bit, mostly about play about uh, Gwent and fishing. Talking about uh, talking about how he misses go, uh, going up to the pond tar and catching a lot of uh, catfish because he's think because to him the catfish is the king of the pond tar. I will do my level best to pretend that I'm interested in that particular topic. Deception check. <laughs> oh no! It's okay to be wrong about the catfish. Uh, real quick, actually, before that roll is made, uh, can Sigrun whisper some fish facts? back to her so she can help with that deception. Some a... fun fish facts. <laughs> fun and fresh fish facts. Fresh from the cooler. Give me a, a stealth. Yes? Give me a stealth check, uh, Sigrid. Oh, oh god. <laughs> no, I haven't updated stealth. Okay, I'll roll it. This goes poorly. I know exactly why it goes poorly, by the way. Sigrid? Sigrid. Oh, no. It did not. You probably gotta have, have it click the pop up thing. <laughs> okay, it might just be acting weird with my uh, Chromebook. Uh, could you roll that for me, too, I'll GM? Get it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. A strong 10. <laughs> I will say, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get a plus one because it's kind of obvious that uh, <laughs> that Sigrun is trying to coach you a little bit, but Zolt, but uh, Zoltan is kind of playing like willfully ignorant because he's just like, I just want someone to talk to about fishing. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can I? Was it two luck to reroll? <laughs> two luck to reroll. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna do that then because that was terrible. And there's this random cat in the background. There it's we go. That's, it's that cat that's following you around. 26. Nana's a fucking master. <laughs> yep. You are putting on the best face of just like, wow, that's so interesting. Even though you're if if you could show your real self, you'd probably be bored to fucking tears. It is just kind of like so mundane that it's almost tragic. Yeah, I'm finding time and, and ways to kind of pivot it to like the reason, you know, like fishing, fishing is this and that and whatever, but like using it as a way to like pivot into like the politics to whatever region we're talking about and how that like impacts the trade of the fish in the area and things like that. It was just so that I could like stay at least continue to look reasonably interested. That actually does play off fairly uh, well with him because it seems like he was, he is at his heart a trader, a merchant. He's very interested in keeping eyes on uh, what's selling and why, and why it might be selling or what's not and why, and figuring out how to play that best. So at least, so you're able to quickly pivot away from fish entirely to just get into politics and how it's affecting trade. Perfect. And he seems to be in a much better mood when you all are trotting up through the these this low area of just with a sea of grapevines that you can see. Like you look to the right and it's all and it's grapevines basically almost onto the horizon and look to the left and it's much the same. Perfect. Um along the way Nienna would have shifted to be like up in the seat next to him um, and it's it's downright flirtatious by the time they get there 
Am I going to have for have to ask for a seduction roll or? No, she's not genuinely trying to seduce him. She's being playful, okay, <laughs> and no. keeping his mood high. I'm gonna do a roll for him. I'm glad that the game that the book gives me the roll the uh, stats result in. Oh no. rolled really good on that deceit check. You <laughs> really did. Good. <laughs> you you might have you might have uh, lied a little too well to him. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. See, oh, when you're convincing, you convince them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm already in a love triangle. We don't need to make this the rumbus thanks. No, we do. <laughs> no, no, we really don't. <laughs> What's happening? Nienna? Yeah? The way he's looking at you is... He has a crush, doesn't he? Yeah, but you also see, <laughs> kind of tell that it's just like, wait, what's... He, like, even in his own mind, he's like, wait, what the fuck's happening here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor buddy. <laughs> and then, uh, as soon as you get, like, up close, like... You get past the vin the uh, vineyard where there are several people working to like make sure that all the vines are trimmed, that there are that any uh, grapes that have gone bad are being plucked away from the vine, so that the healthy ones can stay can keep growing, that kind of thing. And uh, you get a few looks, but for the most part, it's just everyone waving and then going back to work. And he drives the cart up through this little winding hill path up to the top of the hill which is which has the large estate main uh building area of the vineyard and he's like oh, what are you sorry uh he just like looks away from nienna he's like uh here we are uh corvo bianco proper thank you and um, he will uh step down and rush to the side and offer his hand to nienna to help her step down <laughs> <laughs> Nienna will accept. She is she is very polite. And um where might we find your friend? Uh he'd be in the main household, but you have to get through get through his security first. And he just looks over and you all see a uh man that looks to be in maybe late forties, early fifties, bald with uh coming closer to you wearing uh, not noble attire, but like a uh, noble assistant or se attire that shows that he is at least part of the household. And a set of spectacles. He has his hands behind him and he just approaches you and says, Master Chevet, why have you brought people here? Did, did Master Geralt? And he just says, hold oh, your horse is there. These people are here to speak to the White Wolf. To which the individual looks you all over, just... You can tell that he's, like, appraising all of you? Indeed. Well, I must know who it is exactly that I will be introducing. I am the Major Domo of Corvo Bianco. Welcome. And he just gives a very low bow. Lovely to meet you. I am Nienna. This is Sigrun, Phoenix, and Brynhilde. And out of character, she would remember his name, but I keep forgetting it. What's the what's the bear guy's name? Uh, the bear witcher is Faud. Faud. Oh. And this is Faud. Of course. And uh, he just looks to... Uh, Brynhilde, uh, Brynhilde of where? As I know it is generally er etiquette for witches to say their name and where they hailed from. Brynhilde of Nilfgaard. I see. And then he looks at Faud and Faud just says, Faud of Skellige. Very well. Are there any titles I may 
I must address you by the way that you dress shows that you are at least in service to a noble house. Sometimes that comes with titles. As he looks to Nienna specifically. I prefer not to go by titles. Very well. Discreet it shall be. And he will just turn and say, this way, please, and begin walking at a steady pace. And uh, Zoltan just says, your problem now, and just goes to uh, start unloading things, even as he gives a few glances over at Nienna as she's leaving. Oh. <laughs> mm. All right, Render, come on, boy. Best be on your best behavior, okay? You can see that the major domo just looks to render and like hesitates for a sec for a second before looking back immediately and uh, continuing on. <laughs> you all head into the estate itself. It's a large and rather cozily made estate. It's not lavish. It looks like they're, the people here live well, but they don't live in excess of themselves. Like some lords will do, like throw, will just work to show that they, that say, oh, look, I have money. This looks very practical, but still very nice. And he leads you up uh, a set of stairs and says, I do ask that if you have business with Master Geralt, that you keep it well, somewhat brief. He is expecting a number of people and would rather deal with them alone later today. We'll try to keep it as brief as we can. Excellent. And then he moves to a large door and knocks on it thrice and says, Master Geralt, I have a number of visitors here to see you. Let them in. Very well, and he will open the door. Lady, ladies Nienna and Brunhilde of Nilfgaard, Master Phoenix and Master Faud of, S of Skellige, and Lady... Sigrun with Render. As well as Master Ireleth. And he, as soon as everyone piles in, he will then just move to close the door and leave you in the room with the White Wolf, who looks to be in a simple work shirt and breeches as opposed to a doublet and trousers that one might expect. He looks like he is ready to work the fields as opposed to being the head of a vineyard. Brynhilda, I would like a willpower roll, please. Great. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Nienna, you might also want to make one. Possibly, <laughs> depending on your preferences. <laughs> Uh, just possibly. a will, just a willpower roll. Uh, let's go ahead and make it. Mm, willpower and like resist coercion. Oh, okay. great. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so just a willpower roll for me. Got it. Oh, Jesus. That's a 16. <laughs> That's a 12. <laughs> oh, no. So. So I just opt to fail. I'm not even going to bother. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brynhilda, this is this is the person that you've heard and even possibly read so many stories about. This is the Butcher of Blaviken, the White Wolf, Geralt of Rivia. You might be fangirling a little bit. Just a just a smidgen in your head. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and Nienna, you've heard stories about this individual, especially the store his the uh, several stories of his 
interactions with liaisons with mages. <laughs> so, yes, liaisons with several sorceresses of the lodge and otherwise. Uh huh. <laughs> you understand why, and I'll just leave it at that. He slowly steps away from the desk, and you can see the subtle shifts of muscularity underneath the shirt that just seems to oddly form and press into his body as he steps forward one step then the other slowly sending subtle but powerful reverberations through the room as he approaches the group praising each one his eyes follow and dart they seem to settle between Brynhilde and Nienna you're not sure, perhaps purposefully, who he says this to. Damn, you're pretty. But I'm guessing you're not here for me to look at you, are you? Deanna's gonna reach over and just, um, cause she's, she's standing next to Irleth. And she's just kind of gonna very, as subtly as possible, like, grip his hand. <laughs> Not say a word. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> uh, this is probably the first time anybody in the group has seen, um, has seen, uh, Brynhilder's mouth just, like, agape. <laughs> Open, but and not like her, working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like her, her, her eyes just like, 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 or her, her pupils um, dilated. <laughs> as much as a cat's eyes can. Yep. Mm. Don't worry, I tend to have that reaction. Well, my manners then. Geralt of Rivia, Witcher, and she'll he'll, he'll look over to Brynhilda in particular. Wolf School, pleasure to meet you all. Lovely to meet you too. <clears throat> there is one thing that Geralt would would uh, feel, and that is the wolf's head medallion uh, shivering a little bit as he got closer, and especially as he passed near Phoenix. Tilts his head a little, eyes trailing over Phoenix briefly, looking over the whole group. And then he notices someone in particular, and it's not Phoenix. Looks down to Sigrin, and you can just barely hear him mutter briefly under his lips. That short on purpose? <clears throat> uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, he'll look back up to the rest of the group. Oh, seems like we got a bit of a odd group here. What can the White Wolf do for you today? Gonna look over at Brynhilda and see if she's capable of making words. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is she? Sure. Um, uh, Nienna can actually see just like the slightest hint of pink. In, anime in anime her sweat her drop? Is that what we're getting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we... Uh, go, go on, sister. Uh, Don't deprive uh, me of being able to hear a female witcher. She's gonna, um... <clears throat> compose herself. Uh, Mr... Rivia. My name is Brynhildr of Nilfgaard. Um, Phoenix School. We 
are here for some information. No. Oh, is that all? I'm almost disappointed. But as long as you're here, I'm down to talk. We're looking for information on, um, he who refers to himself as the Man of Mirrors. There is just the ever so slightest shift in his expression. Just the slightest touch of a frown. Mm. Fuck. Oh, Din. Hmm? Yeah. We have run into a slight problem with him. Hold that thought. Uh, he's going to go over to the large door and uh, he'll kind of kick it with the tip of his toe a couple times. He's going to wait for the uh, assistant. The major domo opens the door and says, Yes, sir. What's the finest wine that we have available? Well, we have some tu some dry from Tucson. We also have some from Zeracania, I believe. What would you recommend for our group today? He just looks over across the number of, of uh, all of you. A bottle of each and possibly a jug of white gull. And he just looks back and the witchers know that white gull is like an incredibly strong, damn near like 98% per, uh, percent alcohol that's used in potion making. That sounds absolutely perfect. Please bring us some. Plenty, actually. More than that. Of course. And he will just bow again and step away. He'll kind of bob on the balls of his feet for a brief few. Just hear him say, fuck, shit, damn it. <sighs> Every time he says fuck, Nienna has to like turn slightly away because her cheeks go a little bit pink. <laughs> fuck me writing. <laughs> fuck me on the horse, god damn it. <laughs> what? What? Uh. Oh, sorry, you're all still here. Um, mm. He'll turn around and uh, despite how awkward he sounded for just a brief moment, there's still just that smolder on his face. It's just ever so lightly, tastefully uh, touched by uh, dirt and grime. An empathy of three, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> He's working that three. We're working that three. <laughs> well, what information can I offer for you then? We need to know how you handled him last time. I think that's the perfect topic for some drinks. And uh, he'll actually get himself started uh, as he walks over to his desk. He'll kind of pull open a private reserve of White Gall, uh, pour himself uh, a few shots, and then down all of them at the same time. <clears throat> Let that kick in. And then he will begin to regale uh, his tale of how he managed Odin on their first encounter. And would you like me to take over here? Uh, sure thing, that would be great. Excellent. So, the f first time the, that the White Wolf encountered Odim was actually on the way to find the Witch of, Li the Witch of the Song Lilac and Gooseberries, but found him at a inn and had a pleasant conversation with him before Odim got up and left saying that he might ha have a use for him one day or might be able to return the favor. 
little while later, he got stuck on a uh, transport ship being taken to a far off land to be executed for killing a prince who had been cursed and turned into a Zoogle. Only for Odim to come in and offer to spring him, but would require a service for him in turn. That service was to help fulfill the contract of a man named Olgierd, who had basically been living in perpetuity as an immortal because his contract never got fulfilled. Because there needed to be a proxy to fulfill the contract. Geralt acted as that proxy to fulfill the, the tenets of that contract. And Odim throughout the way, assisted where he could, including uh, sending a ghost back to where it belonged by somehow managing to magically torture the spirit until it fled back to the other world and making sure that Olgir didn't try to kill Geralt. When the Man of Mirrors was going to collect the soul of Olgird. Geralt, having studied a little bit more and spoken to people who had studied and worked to know more about the Man of Mirrors, one especially who had made a uh, lifelong work on the project, who just by having studied enough about the Man of Mirrors had been struck blind told him that the only way to really beat the Man of Mirrors is to beat him at his own game. To basically offer a quick game of if I if I win, I get the bre uh, the breaking of a contract or something else. But if I lose, my soul is yours, that kind of thing. He won because he was stuck t because it was a long and arduous riddle that he was taken to an odd sort of other world, pocket world, under the control of Odim. That was tough, and the odds were against him, but they weren't completely unfair. There was always a way for him to succeed. It was just not an easy way to succeed. And, the, and with that, he managed to, to complete the riddle and banish Odim after Odim spoke three lines in what seemed to be three different languages from other worlds. And that's about all the information that I can offer. Would you like my advice, though? Yes. You might challenge him to a game of Gwent. I think that'd be quicker. W what? <laughs> no, it's a card game. It's a uh, strangely popular these days. I. I know what it is. Oh. And so you just hear a uh, knock at the door. Sir, your drinks. Oh, excellent. Just in time. Uh, please bring them in. And the Major Domo will go ahead and step inside and begin to uh, offer wine or 98% alcohol to whoever wants it. Nienna will take wine. The Zirkanian, specifically. Excellent. And he will uh, make sure to let it breathe for for a little while first before he pours the wine for uh, Nienna. I mean, fuck it. We ball. Brynhild is going to request both. You know, 98% alcohol, then wine to wash it down. Aha. Hmm. A woman of class. 
One empathy. Ah, uh, uh, the, va the Vatgarn Chaser. The Vatgarn Chaser. An excellent choice, man. And he will <laughs> pour it like he's used to pouring a, a shot of pure alcohol followed by a chaser of really expensive wine. Witcher after my own heart. Cloud's going to do the going to ask for the exact same thing because he doesn't really know too much about wine. <laughs> and I would like uh, Phoenix, as you're being uh, asked what you would like, I would like you to please make me an awareness test, please. You got it. Ah, uh, that's two luck to reroll, correct? It does, in fact, take two luck to reroll. But because this is more of a sense of smell thing, I'm going to let you reroll for free. Yo, it's going to be worse. Oh, okay, never mind. That's good. Twenty six. <laughs> that's better. Uh, as you're sitting there listening to uh, the tale about how Geralt dealt with uh, the Man of Mirrors and also just listening to this tale, smelling the wine, the strong spirits, there's another scent in the air that might have been there before, but you just weren't picking it up. It's a odd, musty kind of scent. Like an old scent. It's not a scent you've probably smelled too many times before. But one that definitely screams of the of, of the other world to you. Of the world where your people came from. Yeah. Uh, he's is he getting that from the major domo? No, it is not from the major domo. The major domo smells human. Hmm. Um, nothing I've ever smelled before. Oh uh, wait, is it a werewolf fur? It is not werewolf fur. But, it's, but it, it's kind of close. Different enough that you can tell it's definitely not werewolf, but it gives the same kind of vibe to it. That same sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, otherworldly funk. Yeah. Well, that tracks. Can I look with my eyes to see if I can discern where it's coming from? Discern, not discern, God. Uh, yes, I will take another awareness test. Alrighty. And I will give you a plus two because you are, you picked up the scent. Right. Yeah, nah, that's not happening. Nope, your 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 where your werewolf nose may be succeeding for you, but your uh, human esque eyes are failing you. Yep. Um. No, when the uh, the major domo comes up to him, he's just gonna put his hands up and shake his head no about drinking. Very well, sir. And uh, he will look to Sigrid and for the madam. Oh, please. please. Oh, the wine that you can offer. A glass of each, of course. And he will pour a glass of both the uh, Tucson Dry and the Zeracanian. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, she will. Character. Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask out of character as overthinker here. Technical difficulties have been put on hold. Fair enough. I am hey, back nice. for the foreseeable future, unless another cloud Hooray. rolls over. Fair enough. Uh, you are being offered uh, really expensive wine or 98% alcohol if you'd like some.
Uh oh. Mm. 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 <laughs> oh no. What'd you say? I think that cloud rolled over. Uh oh, guys, I think we lost Ill Illareth again. Okay, now it's showing me bars again. Oh, yay. Yeah. There we go. Yay! So, for a quick overview, uh, we were set up on Saturday, which is apparently being blocked by smoke from Canadian fires. So, occasionally, my access to the Wi-Fi just disappears. Ah. Okay. Lovely. So, are you taking wine or pure alcohol? Almost pure alcohol. Wine. No, I'll take the pure alcohol. I might take some IRL as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, just to be safe, the major domo looks to Irileth and, and pours uh, the wine, but also pours a shot of pure alcohol just for shits and giggles. Before he will then bow, but leave the alcohol there to for people to refill on their own and head on out. Well, I suppose I should ask, why is it exactly that you're looking to learn more about Odim? Because he's become our problem. <sighs> Shit. Really now, he's back up to his old tricks again. Something like that? If his old tricks is taking over continents, then yeah, absolutely. He'll raise a brow at that. Uh, the looks well, slightly taking confused. over souls. Taking over the souls of people who have a lot of country. Forget it. I, uh, what do you know about the knowing ones? Uh, Tiama, what would Geralt know? Uh, this is actually a part where I actually have to ask BP what the hell are the knowing ones. The knowing, the knowing ones is another word for the... It's the translation of the elder speech name for sages. Oh. Which I can't pronounce the elder speech name for sages, so I just translated it to the knowing one. Well, of course not. It's like Welsh. It's like Ain Shiver or something like that. I, I've only heard it once and I couldn't find it before tonight, so... Fair enough. Uh, Geralt knows about the Knowing Ones, hasn't really had too many run-ins run with actual full-on elven sages. Mostly the, the mages he's met have either been, uh, real bastards, real fugly dudes, or really pretty women. Hasn't ha had a lot of run-ins with the elven, uh, magic workers. Hmm. Well, I think I would remember if I was tangled up with an elven sage. He's, I have heard of him. he's made a deal with one of them and that their soul is on the line. And I don't fancy someone like Odim getting that kind of raw power. What's the influence that he has available to him at the moment under this sage? A lot. Soldiers, mercenaries, Gwitel, witchers, Dopplers, a lot. Well, that's the influence the sage has. I think he's asking what sort of influence Odim has over the sage. Mm, yes. A contract. Of course. Hmm. He's um, promised to protect a particular person in the event of the next conjunction of the spheres. Right. 
What exactly is the end game here? Collecting the soul, or does he have some other means in mind? My guess is what he's really after is the soul. Um, I suspect there's probably some other reasoning for why, but he's put in an awful lot of effort to convince as many of us not to get involved as possible. Which tells me that the collection of the soul is the most important thing for him. A sage would be extremely troubling. Sages are some of the only people left who know about my people's magic, who have access to it. They're also the foremost experts on secrets of elder blood and the genealogy linked to it. Could see why it's important not to have someone like Odim have access to information like that. That would be pretty damning. Mm. Oh shit. Sounds like you've got a real storm on your hands. Yes. And start coming to you. Mm. I did have the thought to try and beat him at his own game, though I didn't think game in the literal sense. <laughs> well, neither did I at first. I thought to force him back to the table and make him renegotiate his agreements. Mm. Honestly, not the worst idea either. Any chance we can just uh, kill him? <laughs> or, I don't know, kick him out? <laughs> um, well, I think you would have a better time of trying to kick him out than trying to kill him. And frankly, I had a much harder time of the second, even with trying the first. What if we, like, buried him under a hill or tied him up and dropped him in the ocean? We're I'm just spitballing here, okay. Being of old and venerable power. Much as I would find that absolutely fucking hilarious, I don't think that would keep them there for very long and wouldn't address the ultimate problem, which is that if we're dealing with an elven sage, we're dealing with someone who could survive, in theory, indefinitely. Even if we manage to banish him to another world, he'd just come back, he's done it before. Right. It wouldn't fix the problem, it would just put a band-aid on it. What? I meant Gunter. Gaunter, no, Gaunter's, as far as anyone knows, completely immortal. Right, yeah, that's why I'm saying we could lock him up. I don't know that there's a way to lock up someone that powerful, not for long. And it wouldn't change the agreement that's been put in place. Indeed. Contracts, especially of... Gaunter's particular level of a nasty tendency of being binding. Unless rewritten by the original author, I would assume. So I suppose that begs the question, when do you plan to make your move? Soon as possible.
Maybe not. But you came here after all. And I doubt you're about to stop now. Yeah, going like back to the quiet life's not really an option at this point. Well, for the time being, you're welcome to stay here and plan. And... I suppose I might be willing to do business again. I'm not sure that is a good idea, Geralt. And uh, you all turn and see that there is a figure there who was not there before, but uh, now Phoenix smells that intense scent a lot stronger. He is a tall, well-postured, standing kind of regal individual with his hair kind of blown back and looking a little wild, almost, uh, as he just looks to you all curiously, but also looking a little worried for Geralt. He holds his hand on the pommel of a blade, but that is still sheathed, but at his hip, and he looks to have multiple uh, small little pouches along a long ba bandolier from running from his shoulder to his hip. I do not think it is wise that you come out of retirement, my friend. You have been out of it for several decades now. And I don't want to see you hurt. Geralt looks at Geralt. What the fuck is this guy? Ex excuse me, I apologize. And he just looks to all of you and gives a very long and flourishing bow. Emil Regis Rolek Tezarif Godfroy. You may call me Regis. Kind of you to show up, Regis. But tell me it isn't so. All of my life's finest decisions have been inspired by... And he looks over to Nienna. Gorgeous mages. As much as you like to say this, my friend, you and I both know better. Hmm. Perhaps so. What brings you here, Regis? I was in Tucson again, and I wish to see how my dear friend was holding up. It seems that you've cre created quite a empire with Corvo Bianco. Hmm. And it's going well so far. Indeed. And I would hate to see it brought low because you tried to get into a fight that you won before and this one is not yours to dance for. You know, among your many qualities, I always hated that you were right. <laughs> At times, I have hated it as well. But in this sense, I am afraid I must stand firm. Well, I suppose I'll have to ask acquiesce in that case. Mm. Thank you. I apologize to the rest of you, but it seems that my place will still remain here. But if there is any help that I can offer, including staying here while you plan your next move, I would be more than happy to accommodate. Nina yeah. is still blushing. Uh, I think Erleth has fully like moved himself a little bit in front of Nienna. It's like, yeah, we just came here for information. We need to know how to get rid of this Odim guy. You're saying he can't be killed, probably can't be trapped, but you beat him. Challenged him to a game, and he won. Indeed. Oh, I could beat him in a game. I'm afraid. I lied. Did suggest Gwent, but it 
It seems that's not exactly a popular choice. <laughs> well, um, again, you are welcome to stay if you wish. I am not entirely aware of the timeline on this ordeal. Soon. Hopefully, not too soon. Well, in theory, it's whenever we decide we want it to be, but if we wait too long, he's going to know that something's gone wrong with the last attempt that was made, and they won't come when we light that beacon. Ah, I see. My plan is to utilize one of the tricks that the sage's uh, lackeys are supposed to be using to help uphold his part of the deal so that he's separated from them. Have my companions deal with them. I'll deal with the sage. He was my mentor. He won't hurt me. Lock him into a time stop, since Odim seems so incredibly fond of those. And oh, then force Odim to come to the table. Geralt, you uh, you remember the times, the time that he showed you his his own control over time when you would enter a when you had entered a tavern to speak with him, and after being interrupted by a drunkard, he clapped his hands and stopped time to then speak to you and kill the drunkard by shoving a spoon into his brain. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, uh, a word of advice. I'd be at least mildly concerned if he has a spoon in his hand. Noted. I'm reasonably certain I can get my hands on the type of magic to put a time, time stop into place. Lock the this sage into it so that he can't do anything to keep or fail to keep his agreement and force Odim to come to the table. Hmm. Where Sigrun and I will deal with the contract. I would pay to see you watch you work that magic. <laughs> I'd like to see the look on his face even okay, more. Okay, back off a little, man. Yeah, we just just <clears throat> need to remind you of your choices earlier, my friend. Right. At any rate, will you be staying or are you heading off soon? Nina's yeah, I feel gonna... like we probably gotta go. <laughs> Bern, Bernhelder, Bern, Bernhelder looks um, looks towards Nina and just gives a cough. I think it might be nice to plan in a place where he doesn't fully suspect us. Like the woods. I can have some rooms prepared, if you wish. Nina is, is incredibly quiet because she's been put in a very awkward position. <laughs> because Brunhilde is asking for one thing and Ireleth is asking for another. She's just going to look at Phoenix like, please be the tiebreaker. Don't make me do this. <laughs> so you look at Phoenix? Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, since you've done that for the first time, Phoenix is in a cold fucking sweat and he looks fucking terrified. Um, 
and he is staring at Regis. And um, Regis is glancing back to Phoenix, but seems to be a little more calm. Right. Um, but uh, he like shakes his head. I um, personally think it would be best if we head back to the Lord's state to look after the children, everyone, and figure out where to put them in our endeavors in the future. Oh, yeah, Wolf. Did they tell you about the kids? No, the kids. no, we didn't. He perks his brow way up. What? What children? And Regis now looks a little yeah. confused. Uh, the deal, the sage was supposed to provide Gonser or Dim with ten magical kids of at least half elven blood. All single parents. Geralt's eyes flick over to Regis, and you can see him, like, tapping his fingers faster and faster. Just ever so subtly, he is itching. And you can see the Regis just looks to that, looks to the tapping, and says, no. <laughs> to be fair, what we don't know that the plan was ever for the children to go to Odim. The only plan we know of is that he was... Isilgir was building a fight, an elite fighting force of them. He he was intending to train them. We have no... Yeah, but... That's the information we have. But, uh... Seems like you already know what was up there. Don't you? Does your friend over there need a towel? Regis he, looks over to Phoenix and just like, Are you all right, my friend? And, uh, if you need me, I can look you over. I am a barber surgeon. I've been you are like trained in medical practice. Sweating profusely. I think we should go. Okay, we but don't change the, the subject. We have the information that we need, ALF. The children are safe. We prevented that from happening. We know what we need to do next. Always yeah, do but... I think in this moment, Irolith and Phoenix have been a little rough these past few days. I definitely has. So, Irolith just, like, gives him this, what are you talking about? And turns back to Geralt. Do you know something about these kids? Girl, Do you know you what he's planning? Clue. Sorry, say that one more time, GM. Uh, I was just going to say, Geralt has no fucking clue. I am um, not usually in the business of knowing children a great distance across countries and continents. I wish I could be of more help there. All right. All right. Then I guess we've taken up enough of your time and drink. Oh, there's always plenty of drink. If yeah, I may. Just... Oh, go ahead. Uh, Regis speaks up. If I may, I can lead those who need a moment out. And I do believe that the young Madam Witcher wish to speak with you a little bit more, my friend. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, I'd be more than happy to. Please, if you would. Yeah, you two should talk Witcher stuff. That'd be great. Come on, Yuna. Shall we? Of course. Thank you for your time, Gwen Blythe. Of course. And you are more than welcome to return any time you like. Geralt. Thanks a lot, man. 
Regis yeah, is just, just looking go looking over at him and just like Geralt, no. <laughs> Nienna like downs the entire glass of wine that she had. Um, I think Regis is probably the only one who can see just like the slightest coy impish smile that just ever so slightly tilts the corner of his lips upward. And she's gonna turn and follow Aerolath out. <laughs> The fuck is a Gwynblythe? It means white wolf. It's what the, um... Oh my god, out of character. What are they called? The Dryads? Yeah. It's what the, the Dryads call them. Okay. And then I think we leave. Yep. Let it, uh... Followed out by Regis, who just looks to Phoenix and gives a, like, small, like, reassuring smile and uh, a hesitant pat on his back. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I Is there just, like, an instinctual thing for me to tell how old he actually is? Uh, character. just from just how musty the scent was and how intense it was, yeah. uh, old, three hundred yeah. years or more. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Phoenix is gonna like shake himself, um, and turn to Regis and just go, "I'm, I, uh, and he'll actually bow a little bit. I am very sorry, Lord Regis. I, uh, I've never met one of you before." Oh, you've not to apologize for. I've met a few of your number, though. Most were a bit rough and tumble, or they cursed. It is a pleasure to meet you, my friend. Um, if if I were to need assistance with the matter, where would I call upon you? Hmm. I think he... uh, they would aid both of us in a way. He will pull off a small uh, vial and say, if you were to put this into fire, you would give me the scent to track you. Uh, and he'll take it and bow again. Um, thank you, my lord. Uh, and to like, his goal will have a nervous gutter away. And yeah. with that, the two witchers are left in the room. Foud uh, had an idea of what the kind of talk would be going on, and he decided to get the fuck out of there. There is a more noticeable smile as Geralt takes his two shots of white gull and is kind of more gingerly nursing them now as he gets up from his desk and he sort of paces around the room. I imagine that a lot of ours has been giving you some shit. Yes. It comes with the territory. And it does. And you're still here. I must say that is quite impressive. <laughs> By the grace of whatever's out there. Your own grace, or the grace of the mage that seems to be attached to you. She's not as attached to me as she is the other elf. I don't think she's willing to admit that to herself yet. Um, not sure if 
if I should offer my condolences or not then. You know as much as I do. That it's a very lonely path that we take. Mm. That is. But that hasn't stopped me from making that same mistake. Time, he steps, and again, again. And at that point, he is in front of her, blocking eyes as he downs the shots of white gold. He's going to quickly finish off um, the the shot and then the glass of wine that was offered to her. I'd probably get a talking to about downing wine like that. It sounds like you're in good company. Right now I am. <laughs> and I believe that the scene is going to fade to black there. And a short while later, uh, Brynhilda will be rejoining the others with Regis having waited with the others, just small talking a little bit with everyone, including es even especially Phoenix. Who has looked like he's going to throw up the entire time he's around him. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, what the hell's wrong <laughs> with you? Just a little under the weather. Uh, I can call a uh, physician if you need one. But if I actually know a wonderful one. She works here, actually. Ah. She's getting a bit older in her years, but she is still good. No, I was foolish and didn't get enough sleep. I'll be fine. Ah, uh, sleep is very important, my friend. Nienna clears her throat. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell um, them. Yeah, but uh, like Phoenix will like look at her and then like clearly like look at her and then gesture his eyes towards Regis. Like that's not it. <laughs> it's not it at all. <laughs> like, yeah. Out of curiosity, um, Nienna has a Witcher medallion. Is it buzzing when Regis is in the room? A little bit. Little bit. So, uh, Regis, uh, how do you know the White Wolf? Oh, we have, uh, had many misadventures together. Some involving mages and others involving all kinds of horrible beings here in Tucson. He has what? fought I'm for wrong. me, I have fought for him. Uh... Out of character, I don't think that Dandelion ever ever mentioned uh, Regis in any, of, in any of his songs. I think most of the songs were about uh, Yennefer or Triss. That is correct. He... I don't think he's saying any song about Village Forts. Yeah, I don't think he's saying any song of Village Forts or uh, Regis. So yeah, I d not Regis doesn't come to your to your mind if all you got if all you're going on is a uh, dandelion's songs. Uh, one more time, please. I think the fires have smoked us again. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ruh-roh. Uh oh, spaghetti. <laughs> it's definitely an HHS stream. 
Overthinker? Uh, he's muted at the moment. Ah, uh, okay. But uh, yeah, while he while uh, Regis is talking to uh, Irileth, Deanna, the medallion that you're wearing is in fact buzzing a smidgen near Regis. Um, you've heard of Vilgeforts, though, right? You, as a uh, magic user, have been told the horror and the cautionary tale of Vilgeforts, who was uh, such an intense threat to the continent. That's basically, if anyone's magic, you get the story about him immediately. Mm -hmm. And how it okay. took to, uh, several very strong people to, br to bring him down. And even then, it was a, it was a very close thing. I just sort of, I mean, it, in the version of the stories that I have heard, was Regis ever mentioned? Uh... Give me a roll of intelligence and education. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. Seventeen. I'm rolling like shit today. Just consistent twos. I'm gonna re-roll. Okay. Okay. I don't know if if the if roll twenty is just like nah you normally roll well today's just not that day for you. Wow. Oh, no. All right. Cool. Uh, you remember that there were you do remember that there were uh three people involved in the fight against Vilgeforce, Geralt of Rivia, uh, y Yennefer of Vengerberg. The third figure's name it just escapes you. This is cruel. Nana <laughs> just sort of tilts her. <laughs> Nana's just sort of tilting her head and, and, and like staring at him, like she like she's desperately trying to figure out if he's the one or if she's gonna sound like an idiot for bringing it up. Give me a deduction roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No, it's just the, the game doesn't want me to know. It, that's a 13. Maybe? Possibly? That was a long time ago, and you're, and from what you t from what you remember, the third figure didn't make it out too great, if at all. But, uh, maybe? Were you? Were you there for the fight against Vilgefortz? Ah. Uh. Yes, I, uh, I was. That fight did not go swimmingly. I underestimated my opponent, and it cost me dearly. Oh, I've heard. Hmm. So Brunhilde, yeah, uh, I you might be a little, you might be a smidgen sore now. <laughs> but you, but you're walking out, uh, yeah, not with yeah, Geralt, yeah. not with Geralt in tow. Geralt is uh, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she might be in a bit of a sweat. A little bit of a sweat. To which Regis looks up, uh, just like looks over a bit, and then he furrows his brow and just shakes his head, smiling. <laughs> That's uh. my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my Can you guys God. hear me now? Yep. Yeah. 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 Back. Cool. I just think that seeing Brunhilda come out, Iroleth would just offer like a low five. <laughs> just real subtle, like good on you. <clears throat> so sorry, we were um, Witcher in training. an intense discussion. Yeah. There was certainly swordplay, I'm sure. 
I um. Well done, I, need, I need. I need. I need to sit. On a pack Careful of ice. Trip, darling. <laughs> Nienna will <clears throat> very straight face just reach over, um, and her hand will kind of glow green for a moment, and she'll rest <laughs> it on Brynhilder's shoulder, and heal Brynhilder. Thanks. We just don't have to put it where the soreness is. <laughs> No. Oh, oh. <laughs> or that would have to go into the paid cheers Patreon page. <laughs> We're not commissioning we part get going. of that. <laughs> we should get going. Oh, but it's been so lovely watching all of you flirt so messily. Well, okay, mostly him, but still. Yeah, messy is the word for it. For it. <laughs> there are two things that, that uh, he is well known for. Fighting and, well, he hasn't done much of the fighting, so... No. I can see what that can lead to. <laughs> I hate this guy. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Regis, it was lovely to meet you. I apologize that my companions are so, um... Messy. No, read. Oh, let's you fine. Is... fine. Oh, what are you talking about? We're professionals, after all. Well, professional yeah. one thing and amateur everything else. But, Lady yeah, no, we'll Nina, just... you, you do not need to apologize. It has been lovely speaking to you and your friends. Trust me, I know Messy. I have been to many of the soirees that uh, Master Dandelion holds. That, that is messy. Oh, gosh. She will, um, because he, he introduced himself with, like, a proper title, she will, like, offer a hand and do, like, a very low curtsy before and she will, will turn. Oh, go ahead. And he will take the hand and kiss it. And you swear you feel just like the front of teeth a little bit like he can't control it but he lets the hand go and is still smiling when he raises up again she will keep a smile on her face and uh, turn and open the portal alright give me the uh, spellcasting roll Okay, let's roll above a two, please. That'd oh, and, 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 and also, uh, she sees Ilaris low five and she'll just ever so subtly like walk past him and, and like just like just like return it. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> very, very low, just like I have yeah. 23, decent roll. Hooray. <laughs> so it yeah. works. It does work. You open up the portal and everyone is able to head on inside. Yeah, he'll give a small bow to Regis uh, one more time before he walks through. Very well. Uh, Nienna has to stand by and wait for everybody else to go through, so she's just waiting. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I assume my 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 um my my medallion's been buzzing the entire time I've been around this guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She'll she'll look up and just give like a small nod of a, of a I know what you are kind of. <laughs> and, and he gives you a nod that basically says, "Yeah, I know what you gotta do about it." <laughs> I'm gonna fuck your best friend. That's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so going to miss this wonderful palace of tea and wine. Just go through the portal, Walk please. <laughs> Nana is like holding. Nana is like holding a handkerchief, uh, like up to her nose because there's blood uh, coming from her nose. 
Well, it's good to see that two of our kind are sweating. Well, maybe three. And she'll This is really difficult to keep you. open, right, and if you don't it. go... I'm picking up Sigrid and throwing her over my shoulder again. <laughs> there are stars in her eyes, and she, like, fist pumps. She says, finally, yes! <laughs> soon as everybody is through, Nienna will go through, she will give Regis a little wave, and she will close the portal. Oh, when she pulls her hand away from her nose, uh, she's bleeding a fair bit, because she still takes damage when she casts that spell. Only one point, but it's enough. It's enough. Irolith is al um, already offering I you some water. Uh, Phoenix uh, goes a bit away from everyone else and proceeds to vomit all over the ground. Oh my god. <laughs> Sigrun is just... We are, we are so giggling. messy. She's like oh kicking god. her little feetsies and everything. That was the worst thing in the world. This I know that girl oh, guy was kind sure of I felt... He smelled like death. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I felt teeth when we just kissed my knuckle. He's a fucking vampire. Would explain it. Uh, oh shit! Oh, oh god! I Wait. was trying not to throw up in front of Geralt of Rivia. It was really hard. To be fair, I wasn't this... expecting Phoenix to say those words today. <laughs> this has been the time of my life. <laughs> Did he actually give us anything helpful? Yeah. He confirmed that my plan wasn't a bad one. Out of character, okay. he also confirmed that uh, if if you couldn't get convince him to to change hit the contract with Isilgir, you could work to tie uh, a new game minimal contract to it to break it, like how he yep. did with the contract with Olkir. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm um, going to go find Tasha. Make sure everything here was fine while we were gone. Right, we need to check on the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'll sweep the wall and uh, I think I need to talk to the young one. To who? Jack. The one he lied to. Ah, yes. I'll uh, go with you to me with Tasha. I owe her thank you. Right, I'll go check on the children directly. Anna, don't forget to go. Didn't hear any of that. I believe it was just don't forget to drink water. Nianna will pause, so she will turn and pick up the water that he gave her earlier, refill it, and hold it up to say, I'm taking it with me, and then we'll leave the room. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we are going to actually begin with uh, Nianna and Brynhild are going to speak to Tasha. Okay. Wasn't set up for this scene, so give me a moment. No worries. You both are heading through the grounds of the estate, and you see that uh, Tasha is actually out at the stables, uh, helping Biggin to brush the horses. Aww. Speaking uh, in the same tune, but carrying it much nicer, just brush she, brush she. Brush she the horse with bi singing with Biggin. <laughs> Nina looks charmed. That's fucking adorable. Oh, you're back. That was quicker than I was expecting. Yes, well, if we had stayed any longer, I think Irleth might have challenged uh, the White Wolf to a duel or something. Oh, my money would have been on the White Wolf. Mine too. 
Do we lose that bad? Mm. So, did you figure out what you wanted to figure out? We got some confirmation on a plan and some alternative ideas if our plan doesn't go off quite the way we want it to. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, think you'll be able to do it? I think we don't have much of a choice. That's, that, that is fair. It's probably for the best if we make haste soon. Yes. Indeed. Uh, I uh, wanted to come out and thank you again for everything that you've done. Uh, hey, we're, I owed you a favor. We're even now. But we're also, I think at least, we're friends. Yeah. You don't owe yeah. me anything. Yeah, you. I would love to stay, but uh, I don't think I really want to be tangled up in fighting some sort of extra dimensional demon. What's it? Surely. Um, I was kind of hoping you'd stay here because we're planning to take the fight with him elsewhere. Oh, and then yeah, then yeah, I can stay here. I can keep an eye on the kids if you want. That would be helpful. Friend Hilda, you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, always good to see you again, so. She just looks you puzzled for a second, and then I'm having her roll human perception. Mm-hmm. And she just like looks to you puzzled a little bit and then looks to Nienna and then just sort of points to uh, Brynhilda just like, she? She's going to hear in her head that uh, Brynhilda might have uh, fulfilled more than one dream while we were meeting with Geralt of Rubia. And this, the second one took some healing for her to get over. She's just going to look, just kind of look a little impressed and then just smile to Brynhilda. Happy to help. good on you, and then just sort of, like, elbows <laughs> Brynhilda right in the side. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, no amount of healing that you do to me is gonna make all of that go away quite yet. Well, that uh, was telepathic. You wouldn't have heard that line, but... <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. She's, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's, she's still looking at, at, um, at, uh, Nina, when she said, like, once, uh, once she gets nudged in the, um, uh, kind of like nudged, uh, still a little sore. Um, sorry, I did some, um, training. Uh, <laughs> Is that what you're calling it now? What? <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Only the uh, most strenuous of workouts for our girl. I'm feeling very it. called out right now. <laughs> I've heard it's good cardio. Mm. She's she now she's just looking around for all right. Where's the bard or uh, Ilrith? <laughs> Somebody's influencing this conversation. <laughs> and um, then we are going to go ahead and uh, do you have anything else to add? Mm -mm. Nope. In that case, we are going to go ahead and head on over to Irileth, who you head out to the more training fields area and you see a whole bunch of the uh, guards and mercenaries working together, fighting and actually learning from one another. And you see a younger like squire or like cadet working with Jack. And it seems that Jack actually has the upper hand, but he also seems angry. <laughs> Is he winning? And he's like swinging a lot harder. He He's winning, but he's also swinging a lot harder than it's probably safe for practice, even with practice weapons. Hmm. 
I'm gonna move into his eye line and see if it distracts him. You you move into his eye line and you see that he hesitates for a moment, which gives the cadet enough room to land a blow, which then Jack just looks back at the cadet, gets really angry and just tackles him to the ground and just starts like wailing on him, which then has the I'll yank uh, him soldiers off. working to pull them apart. Yep. Let me go. Hey. hey. You don't get to beat people up when you lose. Fuck, let, let go of me. Fuck you. Come on. You're getting some water now. Let's go. And I like and drag you him off to basically the bottom. Just, like, yep. Yeah. He stops fighting you as intensely once you get about halfway there and he just starts walking with you hurriedly. But he he's still trying to like get out of your grip. I'll let him go if he's gonna walk with me. Yeah, he does walk with you. So he, as soon as you let him go, he just like stays nearby you. But he looks still very perturbed. I grab a cup, pull some water out of the barrel, and then stand by and just wait for him to do the same. He does the same and immediately just starts downing it. He looks like he's very working on making sure that he stays hydrated. And also making sure that he keeps his mouth full so that way he doesn't have to talk to you. You had that kid on the ropes. What happened? Weirdest thing. Saw a fucking prick. Earleth grins. Well, you talk like we talk about you. You're mad at me. I can't imagine why. Jack. Do you think that we could have gotten out of there if the kids had started crying about their dead parents. The good news is you don't have to care about that. You don't have to consider it. I do. And I did. And I lied to you. And we won. Now it seems like you've got the potential to win. But you can't let pricks like me distract you. Yeah, fine. Are we done here? Not quite. Sit down. Jack. Do you have a plan? For what? For what comes next. Lord's Guard are pretty good at what they do. You train with them, squire with them. You could have a decent life. It's not like you don't have the moves. Yeah, and I'm sure that they just jump at the chance to pick up some urchin off the street with a dead whore mother. A lot of good fighters have dead whore mothers. I was 10 when my mom died. She wasn't a whore, but... Still, I, uh... It doesn't make you weak, okay? Losing people doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you less than anyone else. You... 
you're going through something hard. Like, but uh, that's not always a bad thing. I mean, don't be an asshole. Don't be a bully. Don't use your power on people that don't deserve it. But, but in this world, I think it's better to have that power and make those decisions than, you know, hide behind someone else and hope they do what's right. Does that make sense? Shockingly, yeah. I don't know if Mama K has a thought for you. I don't know. Like, you could probably go back and clean the bar there. But these guys are good. You keep doing what you're doing. You get in with them. Don't be so mean, okay? Don't be mean to that kid. Beat him, but don't hurt him. Okay? Yeah, all right. I'm sorry about your mom. I am. I got to look after things and they got the better of me. Did you make them pay? Oh, the guy that did it uh, burned alive. And the guy that hired the guy that hired him, we're on our way to deal with him right now. I'm straight. All right, little man. You uh, go kick some ass. And when you start drinking, start slow, okay? You got to work up a tolerance and drink water while you do it. People give you shit for it. Trust me. We have you did. All right, all right. All right. Now school these city on. <laughs> and he will pick up his training blade again, twirl it in his hand, and and such an easy fashion that even you were a little bit older before you got to be that dexterous and like that attached to the blade of the blade, and he just like moves back to the training ground. And don't get cocky. Everybody dies because they get cocky. All right. We are going to go ahead and take a little bit of a detour over to Sigrin and Phoenix, if they would like to have anything to speak to one another or to the children or their various parents about. Uh, question. Answer. What would be the role for cooking? It's a good question. I thought it'd be crafting because it's the only one I'm seeing here. <laughs> Hmm. Crafting up a good meal, am I right? I will actually say that it is crafting, yes. yes. And because it's the Lord's, like, summer home, you actually have access to really good ingredients, so I'll go ahead and give you a plus two. Yeah. Um, not really knowing what we have in store for them, uh, Phoenix is going to cook a very large warm like everyone around the hearth kind of meal like he used to have when he was a kid um and then invite all the kids and the family members down for like a, I don't know what time of day it is but it's just a really big meal uh it's getting into the like the later afternoon early evening so it's getting closer to dinner time alright uh Sigrun will try and assist with the cooking as best as she can uh, give me a crafting roll, Sigrun, and depending on your roll, we'll see how much of an extra bonus you give to Phoenix. Okay. Alright, making the roll now. Give me just... Uh, did it do it this time, or is it still... Not... It is nope. still being a bit of a bitch, so I will go ahead and roll for you. Thanks. 
Once again, Sigrun is too short to even use the UI. Can't reach the buttons. Not laughing. Not laughing at that. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> 16. I'll go ahead and say that a 16 gives you an additional plus two. Cool. Hey, nice. 30. That's a, that's a damn good meal. Yeah. You're, able to, uh, you're able to juggle a whole bunch of different pots and pans. We're, we're cooking all at once like it's nothing. Right. Yeah. Um. Just like big ass roast pig. He's got all the fixings with it. Um. And then he'll go up to where everyone's been staying. He's like, all right, everyone. Downstairs to the dining room. We have a surprise for you. And suddenly there's just a stampede of toddlers, basically, just rushing past you and almost knocking over Sigrun. Right. Ah, okay. Careful now, children, please. <laughs> She's almost getting, like, juggled down the stairs in the wave of uh, cackles and small children. Yeah, he'll just, like, pick you up and put, him on, put you on his shoulders. Like, all right, let's not run over the help. Goodness. <laughs> uh... Yeah, and then he'll um, lead everyone downstairs, and it's just like a... It looks like it's meant for a lord. Um, and then he just, like, throws his arms wide and says, Please, dig in. Y'all deserve it. And people will immediately start digging into, like, the fully roasted pork, the uh, larger uh, sides and all of all kinds of shapes and sizes. Uh, some of the actually redanian style dumplings that your master taught you how to make because he learned how to make them back when he was cooking in novigrad because mm -hmm. they actually brought in a lot more income because then he had to do, didn't have to deal with tariffs for bringing in stuff to make swords mm, right um and with that 30 would i be able to take the extra stuff outside to the um guards and uh, mercenaries we have outside i think with 30 you've definitely made some enough extra stuff that stuff that they could have like uh, sit down and have with vi their wooden cutlery or take out to your friends as well if they you've got plenty to share with all right and then the very last thing i will ask is that um once everyone's fed um i'm sure someone will probably see him do this anyone who's outside he will have a humongous smokingly large platter and he will take a whole ass roast pig out to the stables for Biggin. I don't know what they eat. Yes. Uh, you were correct to assume that they eat meat because they do. He's like, oh, piggy, oinky. And he just like takes it and just starts biting into it. Just like not even tearing parts off, just like all at once eating a, eating a full roasted stuffed pig, kind of like a burrito. Just, I don't know. It's kind of in it's kind of like amusing and amazing and also horrifying to watch. I'll see this every time I close my eyes. I'm happy you enjoy it, Diggin. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Fred make good girl. And he just like bites into like the like the entire like uh le the leg of the pig, just like the entire leg all at once, just down his down his face. You know, after being covered in drowner guts every other day, this is honestly morbidly entertaining. Get some neat. I gotta finish what I was doing. Uh, and he's gonna head back over to his big forge and uh, continue working. All right. Would you like to go ahead and add anything to your weapon that you've created like yeah I, I i believe you have the journeyman skill hmm. would you like to use utilize that to enhance your weapon or would you just like to finish off any little last uh minute additions to it uh i believe he will uh no he's just uh he's just going to finish it up um and lead it up against the wall. Uh, sit down next to it, lean up against the wall, and he's going to go to sleep. All right. Phoenix has passed the hell out.
the rest of the night is generally uneventful. It is quiet and calm and peaceful, but it still has that air of it's the calm before the storm, almost. Is there anything else everyone else would like to do before the beginning of the next day and the beginning of preparations for the finale of this grand plan? I can think of one thing, but it's just a fade to black. <laughs> well, I expected that. I do think Irileth goes over his weapons in a sort of almost ceremonial process. This is sharp. The handle is tight. The bow is strong. Arrows are sharp. All of them are straight. Understood. Brynhilda. There was one thing that you left uh, Corvo Bianco with that Geralt gave you as a way to aid more in dealing with uh, the Master of Mirrors. He saw that your medallion was that of the Griffin School. Mm -hmm. And so he gave you a, a potion uh, recipe, a formula that is a take on uh, Petri's filter. Yep. That is meant to enhance magic. And it is a enhancement of that even to make it so that it's uh, even stronger and to make it so that the, basically you'll be able to cast your signs and they will act about 50% stronger. So if you were to ca cast, say, Igni with using six vigor, it would mm -hmm. act as if you would cast it with nine. Mm. And he's and he just gave me the recipe for it. He gave you the recipe and there was a small pouch that he gave you that he said contained the uh, special ingredient that was incredibly hard to source. He says that uh, if you ever find yourself a Corvo Bianco, look him up. He'll give you a little bit more. It's enough for to make basically one batch of the potion. Then I think I'm going to spend my time crafting that potion. Please roll me alchemy. Twenty one with a twenty one, you are very easily able to make it. It's very it is similar to how Peter's filters is made, but instead of using a particular cave mushroom, it uses celandine, which is a uh, a flower. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of se uh, smelling very dank and very earthy, it smells brighter. But you can also sort of like feel the uh, strength from the secret ingredient. Like your medallion even buzzes a little bit mm -hmm. from it. She'll put that away and just kind of spend the rest of the night um, with the whetstone on her blades. Excellent. And at the beginning of the next day, when people are preparing to head out, Tasha actually greets all of you. I know that I said I wouldn't be going, but I figured I'd go ahead and help with putting up the portal so that way our dear friend here didn't go into whatever this is with a bloody nose. Oh, well, you can help me with the first of the bloody noses, but I'm going to have to cast this spell a few times today. So I appreciate the help. I wish you the best of luck and making sure that uh, just don't drop your guard. I know that apparently 
you think you've got this planned out, but things still go sideways. They always do. All right. And give me the uh, spellcasting roll for that, please. Okay. You get the portal open. It is... Where exactly have you picked for this fight to take place? Um, I... So, out of character, I don't know where it would be, but uh, Nienna would have picked a place that would... That is kind of like the ideal terrain uh, for the group that, that is going through. Um, a place where they don't have a lot of... Um, tight enclosed spaces that are difficult for Brynhildr and Phoenix to maneuver um, has plenty of places that are kind of up high for Ir for Irileth uh, to Elven find a ruins. perch. Um, yeah, we, we had talked about ruins, so if there's something like that, um, that's probably where she would pick to send them because she's not going with them, so. Understood. Anna, was there ever a yes. place he took you? Like a ruin that is significant to him. Um, I mean, there's a few, but they wouldn't be any more or less important than where I'm planning to take him. But I can't bring him to where you're going. That would just be flying the face of the entire goal here. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, remind him of the good old days with everything. I'm taking him to a place like that, yes. All right. Be safe. Don't die. Um, she'll kind of give a little smile. I think you're more at risk of that than I am. And never. Um, and before they go through, she will make sure that both Brynhilda and Irileth get kisses on the cheek. Please be safe. <laughs> no. And he goes through grinning. I'll make sure he doesn't die as best as I can. And she'll give Nina just a kiss on the forehead and um she's gonna look back and give Tasha um a a smile. A genuine smile too. That's a rarity. Uh, and then she'll walk through the portal. Well that's concerning. She'll look at Phoenix as they go through. Um Wait about 20 minutes before you light it, please. Uh, and she'll, he, hand, she'll hand him the beacon item. Yeah, he'll take it. Um, the last thing I want to do is kill you. I hope you understand that. But I'll do it. If that's what you want. And I can hold a smart. It's not what I want. The goal was to have a... No, I know, but I will do it, if necessary. Let's hope it's not necessary. I know. Thank you again, Tasha. Of course. And she just gives you, like, a uh, playful little wink as you go through. Really wish we had more time, but we really... And he will go through. <laughs> as soon as he's gone, I'm gonna close the portal. <laughs> Look at Sigrid. Oh, this is going to be one fine tale to burn on the back of my barrels of new ale. Planting mm. Odin. <laughs> make sure that you keep. Make sure that you keep um. Out of character. Why have I forgotten the wolf's name? Render. I'm having one of those days. Render. Make sure that you keep Render quiet. 
If I have to keep him busy, I'm going to keep him busy, which means I'll need you looking for the spell. <laughs> no worries. Quiet as a mouse, dear. So, ready to do this? He's going to kind of uh, reach over to a... Um, Uh, man, an hourglass that she has, and she's gonna kind of turn it upside down. Basically, give give them about nineteen minutes, and then uh, to rest, and then she and Tasha will open up the next portal. She wants them to arrive as the others are leaving. Basically, gotcha. So that time passes, and it feels like an eternity. But for the final grains of sand fall, you open up the portal once more and you step through back with Sigrun and Render back into Dolblathana. And we um, are going to end our evening there, unless Nana has something else. I had know. one more thing. As we are stepping through, I will turn and I'm going to hand Tasha a folded piece of paper which I will talk to you about after session. Excellent. And with that, we are going to say goodnight. <laughs> <laughs>